from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, September the 4th, 2018. We open with two incidents in the West Bank. Last night, a Palestinian man approached a group of IDF soldiers at a security checkpoint near the West Bank Jewish settlement of Kiryat Arba and took out a knife. The soldiers opened fire, killing the terrorist. And the day before, IDF soldiers arrested a Palestinian man who tried to beat an Israeli man with a small toy metal bicycle outside the Jewish settlement of Tekoa, also in the West Bank. The Palestinian was said to have been throwing rocks at passing cars and then tried to drag the man out of his vehicle and attack him. Several residents of the settlement were able to wrestle the terrorist to the ground and hold him until police arrived. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu welcomed the President of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, to Jerusalem. This is the first official visit by a Filipino leader to the Jewish state. Today, Duterte met with Israeli President Reuven Rivlin and visited Israel's memorial to the Holocaust, Yad Vashem. On Sunday, Netanyahu met with U.S. Special Representative for Syrian Affairs, James Jeffrey, in Jerusalem. The two who were also joined by U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, discussed the situation in Syria as well as threats from Iran. And staying with Syria, its official state news agency claimed that Israel attacked targets in the southern Syrian city of Hama tonight and claimed that the Israeli missiles were shot down by Syria's air defenses. Israel usually does not respond to such reports. Separately and earlier today, the Times of Israel reported that the Israeli military told reporters at a press conference that it had conducted over 200 airstrikes against Iranian and Hezbollah targets in Syria since 2017 most of which were on shipments of advanced weaponry, as well as military bases and infrastructure. A Jewish man in Paris said that he was assaulted in what seemed to be a robbery that turned into a hate crime. According to a report by the France Blue radio station, the victim, who remains unnamed, said a man on a scooter drove up to him from behind and pulled his necklace off his neck, and then when the alleged assailant saw the necklace had a Star of David on it, he yelled an anti-Semitic slur at the man and then was joined by two more men riding another scooter who all started beating the Jewish victim. Police are investigating. Well, Israelis competing in the upcoming judo competition, the Grand Slam in Abu Dhabi, will now be able to do so under the same conditions as all other participants. If you recall, at last year's International Grand Slam competition, Israeli judokas were not allowed to show any Israeli emblems on their clothing, no Israeli flag was allowed to be flown, and the Israeli anthem was not allowed to be played. In response to the discriminatory treatment, the International Judo Federation told the United Arab Emirates that they would be banned from hosting future tournaments, after which the UAE changed its policy. And the Federation said yesterday it was pleased to announce that the UAE Judo Federation confirmed in an official letter sent to the IJF that all nations participating in the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam will have the possibility to do so in equal conditions. The tournament takes place October the 25th through the 27th. American and Israeli researchers have found a way to predict blood pressure instability in patients. Researchers at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center, together with their peers at Ben-Gurion University of the Negev and Hadassah Medical Center in Jerusalem, have developed software to predict hemodynamic instability in intensive care patients several hours before any symptoms present. Director of Trauma Services at Cincinnati, Professor Victor Garcia said hemodynamic instability is a severe and life-threatening complication in the intensive care setting. He said earlier prediction could save lives. A group of young Jews from Uganda completed a historic birthright trip to Israel last week. This was the first time that Ugandan Jews took part in the free 10-day trip to Israel designated for young Jews between the ages of 18 and 32. 
Three dozen young Ugandans took part in the trip, which was operated by Israel Experience, with the help of Marom Olami, which is the young adult division of the World Conservative Movement. Their trip included a ceremony inaugurating a new Torah scroll at the Western Wall's egalitarian prayer section. And just ahead of the Jewish New Year, notes with prayers that are placed in the Western Wall were cleaned out, as they are twice a year before Rosh Hashanah and Passover. Western Wall Rabbi Shmuel Rabinovich led a team from the Western Wall Heritage Foundation to extract all the notes last week with wooden sticks, which will then be buried in a Gniza, a burial place for sacred religious texts on the Mount of Olives. And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, September the 4th at 7 o'clock, Professors Gary Saul Morrison of Northwestern, Gabriella Safran of Stanford, and Kenneth Moss of Johns Hopkins discuss aspects of Jewish culture surrounding the Russian Revolution. Then at 8 o'clock, historian Samuel Kassow discusses the ways in which the Jewish community of Russia was affected by the 1917 revolution and the lasting implications on Jewish life. Both programs from the YIVO Institute at the Center for Jewish History. At 9 tonight, Mark Golub sits down with Rabbis Mitchell Wahlberg, Rachel Ain, and Steve Guto to share their thoughts ahead of the High Holidays. Then at 10, members of the Academy for Jewish Religion discuss and perform High Holiday text. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, it's In the News with Mark Golub. And that's the JBS News update for Tuesday, September the 4th, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader.